Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, it's great to be here. And just want to introduce myself again. Um, Lonnie Avi Brooks here in Oakland uh, on the ancestral lands of the Ohlone. And uh, just really acknowledging where I am in that space. Um, so I wanted to uh, also introduce my my partner here, um, Ahmed Best with the Afro Rhythms Futures Group. To Hello, everybody. Uh, coming to you from Los Angeles, the uh, indigenous place of the Gabrieleno indigenous people. Um, and thank you for having us. Welcome. Really enjoy it. Dr. Lonnie, take it away. All right. So I uh, just wanted to tell you and share with you about a little bit about the background of our imagination forecasting game, Afro Rhythms from the Future, and just take you on a little journey of what that means, where it comes from, and to give you some background. So we're going to talk about, you know, where 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 it comes from. Um, it's based, and I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully that'll work, and you'll get to see some of what I'm talking about here too. Oops, that's, um, I'm going to stop that for a second. Uh, but we'll come back to, let's see, another thing. So what I'm going to uh, talk about really is what does Afro Rhythms from the Future uh, come from, and it comes from that we're surrounded by algorithms that um, really edit and inform our lives. So if we go back to Sophia Noble's um, work, Algorithms of Oppression, the idea of we are immersed in algorithms um, and that they're largely created by, and I love this book by Sophia Noble, Algorithms of Oppression, How Search Engines Reinforce Racism. Basically, we, we are surrounded by algorithms that are edited, but not in our best interest, right? So we came up with this idea of having a forecasting game that really centers uh, Afrocentric ideas and points of view. So we decided to call it Afro Rhythms from the Future and to really see that for every algorithm you make, you need an Afro Rhythm in place. And so we created this game to center and shift the gaze away from normally male white perspectives in algorithms who largely create algorithms to perspectives that can heal us, honor and leverage our ancestral heritage. Um, so that's where our game comes into place. And I just love these, the, the design of our logo from Alan Clark in Oakland and the graphic design from Paula Tay uh, and the font from Frank Adebaye. So, Looking at that, the idea of Afro Rhythms in the Future is to visualize alternative memories of the future in what we call cognitive prosthetics, limbs that we build in our mind to experience the future to heal ourselves and to heal others. And I just love this um, particular portrait from Natrice Gaskins, uh, where she just uses AI to portray these powerful leaders um, in our community. And in this one, Stacey Abrams. So. Looking at that, we want to talk about and give you an experience of Afro Rhythms from the Future by playing a video of it. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> uh, reshare and talk about and introduce a video of our game. And let's see, before we get there, um, hopefully you can see my screen. This, this particular event took place in May 22nd, 2019 at the Neuhaus Hollywood Workspace. Uh, with the Fathomers and the Afrofuturist podcast that's co-hosted and co-produced by myself and Ahmed Best, uh, in particular hosted by Ahmed Best. And we play tested Afro Rhythms in the Future, a card driven storytelling game. And so hopefully you can see my screen and we're going to play this video for you to immerse yourselves in that experience of the game. And then we'll walk you through uh, the game after that too. All right. Okay, let's play the show. Everyone can see? Okay, let's go. We all have agency over what the future can bring. Each of us individually can shape not only our personal future, but the future that we all live in. And the object of tonight is to get you to imagine. We want to get you to get out of the frame of reference of what you think your future might be and get as creative as possible. And we're going to see what we can build 
using that imagination and speculative thought. And we might come up with some cool stuff. So there are people who have tension cards. These tension cards are going to establish the parameters of our universe, and we're going to choose two cards. Let me see. Uh, raise your hand if you have a tension card. All right, all the way back there. More or less black feminist leadership. More or less black feminist leadership. Who else has a tension card? More or less social justice. More or less social justice. So now that we have the parameters of our universe, we have created four multiverses that we can live in all along the spectrum of those two choices. So now you guys in your chairs, you have inspiration cards. All right, let me see. What is your inspiration card? Oh, I have fashion. Okay, fashion. I like this one. I like fashion. What would be an article of fashion that would give you more black feminist leadership and more social justice? Yes. I was just thinking about the notion of the invisibility cloak, but also like to have it be reversed. Like it could make you invisible, but it could also make you more visible, amplifying like what you normally So an amplification cloak. Like Go. A bodysuit. Body what does this bodysuit do? <laughs> How about a bodysuit that repels emotional damage? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> okay, here we go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. So we have a bodysuit that when anything emotional tries to come and get you, it repels it. How could it be dystopian? How so? If you're not feeling emotional damage, then there's no consequence to society. So it feels like it could be a very negative thing to have a suit. Right. So that could be dystopian. Okay, I need another inspiration, another object. Inspiration, queer liberation. Queer liberation. Object, who has an object? Object, 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 here. Buttons. Buttons. You can press the button and change your gender. Oh. A gender shifting button. Who's with that? Yeah. The button should be more like, you're more on the spectrum, more fluid. Yeah, I think we're like post binary. It's not binary. So what if the button is just like, it just regulates you through your queer liberation? It's a dial. It's not a button, it's a dial, <laughs> right? Research has shown that we can create alternative memories that heal trauma. And how do we heal the trauma of 400 years of oppression? How do we heal any personal trauma that we've had individually, uh, collectively? And how do we create alternative memories of the future that pull us in and create resiliency for everybody? So we see, this game as potentially available in schools, uh, colleges. I played it with my students. I like playing it with students also because, especially your students of your Afrofuturism course, they want to be creating their own cards and their own ideas that they're putting into the game. So it's not just using what we've given them, but adding to it. Let it become a, a democracy of the future for everyone, available to everyone. I always love the groove at the end of that video. It's always grooving. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Live Arts, for having us. Um, thank you, Dr. Lonnie Brooks, for giving us an overview of Afrofuturism. What we'd like to do right now with the five minutes remaining that we have left is give you a brief example of what you just saw. The panel before us was talking about dreaming. I'm a really, really big fan of dreaming as someone in Hollywood, as somebody who um, does stories for a living and makes things from the from my imagination for a living. Uh, I'm a constant dreamer. I'm a big dreamer. Um, most of my work involves dreaming. So Afro Rhythms for the Future gives you the ability to dream while you are awake and create the things of your dreams. And then when you go to sleep and you dream and all those neural pathways are coming together after all the neuroplasticity that you've made from playing Afro Rhythms, we can create the future in which we want to live in. So let's go to our first section of how we play Alpha Rhythms from the future. The first thing that we do, Dr. Lonnie, if you don't mind sharing your screen, is we choose tensions, right? And we call tension cards the framework of our universe. It is, is This is a world-building game. It is a multiverse 
world building game. So in order to build the multiverse, we have to define our universe. And in that universe, we place not just Stacey Abrams, but we place a world. So we start with our attention cards. Our game really depends on building the future from the community in which uh, that are playing the game at the moment that they are playing it. Okay. So we start with six tensions. We choose two decolonizing magic, hip hop, black leadership, queer, civic duty, and the community chooses two tensions, right? And then we get to vote on those two tensions democratically because democratizing the future is what we are all about at the Afro Rhythms Futures Group. Once we choose those two tensions, right? We put them along what we call decolonizing black leadership are the two tensions for this representation right now. We put those along the Kalunga lines. What are the Kalunga lines, Dr. Brooks? You are muted, Dr. Brooks. The Kalunga lines uh, come from the Congo Cosmogram, which is a journey through life from the Congo people. And it also is very similar where the, the Kalunga lines are the lines uh, where the, our ancestors meet emerging possibilities and ourselves in the present. So in that, in that, in those Kalunga lines that separate the bottom half of the present world that we live in and the, the bottom half of where our ancestors are and the upper half of the cosmogram where we live, uh, we meet in the middle in this line where emerging possibilities come into into play. The liminal space, the liminal of the space. imagination. That is the most important space in our game is this liminal space because all things are possible. So once we'd established our parameters of our universe, you get to choose where in the world you want your world in the universe. Five being the most possible, in this case, decolonization and black leadership, and one being the least possible, decoloniz decolonizing and black leadership. Once we've chosen our world, then we get to do some fantastic things. We get to make things. We get to actually make systems artifacts, ideas. This is where we really get into what Afro Rhythms is all about, right? You take an inspiration card and you either put it with a system card or an object card. You put it with two system cards. You put it with two object cards, whatever the community feels like at the day. So you can take the mothership, right, as an inspiration and add a library as an object. And you can come up with something completely ideated from the top of your mind, from your imagination, from the opportunity right there. What would be a mothership library, Dr. Lonnie Brooks? Mothership library. Well, and, and, you know, I have to give you credit for this too, because it's this, you, you could have an ancestral murmuration mothership library oh. where, you know, <laughs> think of that, that shape of birds that goes in different, different configurations and that's a murmuration. Yes. And, you know, and they're creating something, a collective, uh, a collective memory. And so think of entering a library where you have collective configurations, holographic images that surround you, that give you a feeling for what it might have been like to be with um, Martin Luther King or Harriet Tubman or with, um, you know, aboard the, the slave ships, you know, giving you that that moment of being and talking with Ida B. Wells at the moment. So the mothership is this powerful uh powerful metaphor. I'm thinking about a mothership library to a certain extent, like when it comes to like how um, Africans who were kidnapped and enslaved, they brought seeds and they brought rice and they corn it into their hair. So maybe there's a, a hair yeah. library, right? Where um, you can actually place these items, place these seeds into your hair so you can feel how it felt um, to grow. What if the, what if the, what if the seeds can grow from the cornrows that you put in your hair and that knowledge can be shared through that hairstyle? These are the things that we talk about. These are the things that we ideate. These are the things that we imagine playing aphorisms for the future. We like to always talk about there are no wrong answers, right? There are no wrong answers in aphorisms from the future. We are welcome to all ideas. We're welcome to all labels. At the end of Afro Rhythms from the Future, what we do is we choose an obelisk based on a vote of what we feel in the community is the artifact that best represents us in the world that we created. And then we send that artifact out into the universe. Whomever encounters that artifact, they know who we are and they know what we are about. That's a very quick overview of what Afro Rhythms from the Future is. We hope 
that you guys will join us at some time and play our game. We um, use it as a tool to ideate, to create away from this idea of what we think is normal. We love, 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 love to create a world and create a future that puts us in the center and democratizes the future for all. Dr. Lonnie. Yes, I just, uh, I love that, you know, the idea of democratizing the future where black futures matter and really owe oh, a special acknowledgement to our partners, the Fathomers and to the Equitable Games Group um, and to the Design School at Stanford that we're working with at the moment too. Um, and so we're just excited to play this with y'all and, uh, and work with different organizations to play this at the moment too. So, uh, you know, we're getting a starter kit together to train people to become seers and librarians uh, mm -hmm. who help to facilitate the game. So just excited to share this with you all. And, uh, you know, again, to immerse ourselves in experiential futures and what that feels like, um, inspired by Radical Black Art. Thank you so very much yeah. for having us, Live Arts. <laughs>